Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dor, and while the ENTJ community might not be that big, uh, I still find that the ENTJs are fascinating. Beyond the stereotype CEO executive uh, description, I find that ENTJs are actually uh, one of the most misunderstood intuitive types along with the ENFJs. Uh, often I find that people see ENFJ ENTJs as surprisingly passive, uh, sitting behind a desk, writing files compared to the ESTJ, who is much more hands-on, who is much more aggressive and similar. Often I find that people discount the ENTJ's thinking judging function and their thinking extroverted preference, the fact that they are extroverts and thinkers at the same time. I will argue that ENTJs are actually far more aggressive and proactive than definitions often give them credit for and I think that can cause some mistyping with some ENFPs and ENTPs drawn to the description because of it. Now the ENTJs are described as thinking types with repressed uh, feeling and I would argue that uh, when you look at the ENTJ you might get the perception that you're dealing with an emotionless type and you can easily get your thoughts drifting towards the psychopath label but I would argue don't do that. ENTJs actually do have emotions and quite a few of them in fact. The surprising thing is that ENTJs are driven by two core emotions. Uh, in particular, they are driven by, of course, uh, fascination towards a goal, something that they are preoccupied with, a vision, or something that they find thrilling or stimulating that they want to research or find out about. Similarly, uh, beyond this, the ENTJ is driven by in many ways a sense of curiosity to what's happening right now new patterns, new data, new information, an ENTJ that can get hands on a new project, a new idea, a new business product, a new pattern in society before anyone else will feel very very happy about this, will feel very ex ex uh, excited, enthusiastic about it. You'll notice that of course excitement and enthusiasm is an emotion just like all others and that ENTJs are far from em unemotional on this level. And beyond this level of excitement and intuition, I would argue that ENTJs also are highly driven by that concept of satisfaction and comfort. ENTJs are searching for that position of power where they can relax themselves and feel comfort and satisfaction over what they have achieved. ENTJs are driven by scoring themselves, measuring their progress, seeing how well they're doing, and raising their progress on this ladder. The thought of achieving progress or doing something better than before is greatly stimulating to the ENTJ. The ENTJ searches to achieve, to improve, to become better, to master. And it's beyond this also the fact that Thinking extroverts like the ENTJ and ENTP are highly driven by seeing results. They feel a sense of comfort, a sense of pride at best when they are able to deliver results, get, new get a new position at their work, get promoted, get more money, get better results, get something that they didn't have previously, achieve a new pro uh, contract, achieve a new deal. ENTJs and ENTPs are highly progress oriented types. It's results oriented in the sense that they want to know that they've done something worthwhile with their time. Beyond just that CEO stereotype, you'll find that many of the ENTJs that didn't become CEOs found themselves being, being really good at being judges. Being people in a position of scoring and evaluating other people's progress, showing other people what they are doing and what they can do and how they can reach the next level, challenging other people to do their best, pushing other people to the limit. The ENTJs are great for getting people to think in terms of victory, winning, achieving, improving, becoming better at what you do.
ENTJs are the kind of people you go to seminars with where they tell you how you achieve, how you do the good business, how you improve, how you manage stress, how you make sure that you land that deal that you wanted. ENTJs are also surprisingly involved in politics. It's not the case that ENTJs are purely limited to that economic field. I'm not sure why that... Uh, why ENTJs are only discussed in that matter. It's also that you can find ENTJs in the field of bodybuilding, athletics, in the field of uh, uh, the question of your body and what you're doing with it, how you're using it. Uh, for the ENTJ, the body is an instrument to be maintained. Uh, ENTJs can take pride both in doing good at work or working out and actually seeing their muscles, seeing their improvements, seeing how they become stronger, better at what they do. ENTJs are, in politics, also the people that can evaluate, because in politics, if you think about it, you see first and foremost that game, of course. You see, oh, how do you hold that speech? How do you navigate the people? But then, in politics, there's a whole other dimension hidden beyond it all, where politics is actually politics. It's about how we do things, how we manage resources in society, how we divide resources, how we uh, manage a project, how we get a healthcare proposal through, how we build a solid healthcare system. And there, ENTJs dominate. They show high confidence in what they believe in and what they do. They know their shit. <laughs> they have a clue about what they're doing. And they are going to be very good at advancing their ideas in practice. You'll find that ENTJs usually are people that bring out new proposals on the table, that take uh, ideas and innovation and new projects and build them into strong systems, that create strong systems. They are also, like the INTJs, highly strategic in the sense that they are good at seeing how to advance an idea over time, how to plan an idea, how to execute an idea, how to make sure that you get from that starting point, where you began, to where you need to go. That sense of setting up a goal. I am here at 1000 votes or 10% support in the population. What can I do to bring it to 60%? That more raw, that more physical, that more uh, actually uh, intellectual part of politics is actually highly attractive to ENTJs and you'll find a lot of ENTJs in the position of being media figures, being the public speakers that talk about and discuss political ideas and beliefs in high detail because they are fascinated with that and they will call you out on if you're doing a bad job as a politician or if you're not doing it thoroughly. You'll also find a high amount of diversity among ENTJs. I met libertarian ENTJs, I met feminist ENTJs, I met anti-feminist ENTJs. And the thing about these uh, types is that for them, of course, I don't think that actual ideology is that important. It is the question of what seems rational, what seems to be the smart, decent thing to do. What is good business? What is good uh, at improving the economy? What creates jobs? Uh, how do I improve my status in society? How do we divide power? How do we become more powerful? How do we empower people? That's those questions of power and hierarchy are extremely important to the ENTJ. And of course here also you can see a clash between uh, women and men in the sense of uh, the fact that the female ENTJs can sometimes carry opposite ideals compared to male ENTJs, just depending on what interest they tend to represent or what group they tend to feel speaks the most to them. You'll also find ENTJs that are more like sideshow figures. Not all ENTJs will take that uh, dominant role. Of course, that role is ideal for an ENTJ, but there are ENTJs that work extremely well as secretaries, as background figures that make sure that shit gets done. The fact that uh, 
you have you have a project or you're a part of a business you're trying to advance in it ENTJs can understand hierarchy and if they feel uh, if they are at a certain point of hierarchy they are of course loyal to that level they want to command respect in that position even if it's a low position a medium position or a high position uh, they will want to do that in a way that inspires trust respect and admiration from their colleagues it's not that the ENTJs are admiration seekers like Enneagram 3 types, but more often that they are people that seek to inspire true action. In a sense that they want to seem good at what they do, they want to command respect, they want people to, uh, to see that they're doing a good job. They want to get rewarded for doing a good job. And if they don't get rewarded, of course, they, that's when they will make a big fuss. ENTJs have some dark sides, of course, uh, for example, uh, ENTJs can fall prone to being cocky in a sense of overestimating their own ability and thinking they can take on more than they can handle. Uh, also intimidating other people if they feel threatened by other people. ENTJs can be prone to paranoia and sometimes suspicion towards others if they feel like other people are trying to take away what they have earned or worked hard towards. ENTJs uh, are not good with uh, social influence and uh, sway and uh, manipulation techniques. ENTJs are not going to fall easily prey to uh, your words. They don't really understand that level. They will see your results and what you're doing in practice. They won't hear your intentions as much as what you actually do. ENTJs can also fall prone to uh, sometimes uh, uh, acting a little too rashly or quickly, taking on something, doing something a little sloppy sometimes, uh, going into something and um, rushing into it a little too quickly. It's not that they're sloppy exactly, of course they can be very rigorous with their thinking and judging, but that they take it on before they understand what it is, or that they start up a new path and this new idea can of course be shit. Uh, ENTJs beyond this uh, might need to work to be more open-minded sometimes to other people's thoughts and uh, to uh, be better at uh, dealing with different options when other people suggest other changes. Uh, don't uh, sometimes keep the open mind that sometimes a change can bring uh, be incorporated into your path or what, where you want to go. Don't immediately dismiss a new idea but uh, see if you can fit it into your main goal before you decide if it's bad or not. So this is my uh, ENTJ video and I hope you enjoyed it and as always uh, if you have any comments, leave them down below and I hope I can uh, help uh, challenge some stereotypes and bring up some new thoughts about what it is to be an ENTJ. That's all for now and may your neurons be with you.